Hello everyone, welcome back to the Bremen Pokemon Trading Card Game Regional Championships. We are about to go into the top four and we will be featuring Mark Lutz against Philip Schultz. Schultz. Thank you, sorry I almost forgot there. Once again, I'm Nicholas Pierce, I've been kindly invited as a guest on to commentate on the stream alongside the lovely Lydia Homback of Limitless oh, TCG. Thank you, Nick. You're welcome. <laughs> so yeah, we're, just, we're pretty much ready to sort of cut into this game. The players are already ready at the table and setting up. Yeah, so, they are. We, I guess we'll just uh, see what it might see what they're up to. Now we do have, as we said, Mark against Philip. Mark yeah. being a clear fan favourite that we've been requesting sure. a lot. And I even asked him personally to smile for the camera this time. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. For those of you who are interested, the the other top four match is uh, Tord Radcliffe, of course, versus. Um, Thomas Yus, and uh, we didn't tell you guys what Thomas Yus is playing. Uh, those two guys are playing a Drampa Garbador mirror match, actually. Oh, so there's been so. two Drampa Garbs in top eight then? Yes. Interesting, okay. And uh, actually, all uh, top four decks do play Garbador. So, once again, guys, even in a new standard yeah. format, Garbador is still the meta dominating force that it was before, so I guess almost no surprises there. In any case, let's cut to the game, guys. We've, uh, they say both these players are ready, they're set up. Oh, they've actually already started. Oh, well, we we might just start our timer and uh, yeah, maybe keep in mind that it's a little bit late. Yeah, well, so someone obviously mis I guess miscommunication somewhere. Someone didn't tell us that the game had already started, but never mind. In fact, Philip has already had a turn. He's attached a DC and played a town map. Oh, classical Philip Shorts. Indeed. <laughs> and so this match should be quite interesting because, of course, this is the uh, Galissapod Garbador Mirror. Yes. Isn't it? So and. Uh, if you guys watched our stream earlier, those are exactly the, the, the exact same 220 cards we saw in the first round. So Mark is playing the exact decklist as Maze was, and we showed you uh, Philip versus Maze in the first round. Uh, Philip was able to win this game, even so the matchup actually should be slightly in favor of Mark's and Maze's list, as Philip is not playing Acerola. Uh, yes, indeed. Acerola is going to be really, really huge as essentially Acerola just means that um, in terms of the damage that's sort of available and uh, what can be sort of left off, Mark is always going to be able to be more healthy essentially. He's going to yeah. be able to you know, pick up his stuff, he's going to be able to keep attacking, he has more switching options to do 120 with the first impression and Philip is just not going to have uh, that available to him. Yeah, that's true. So, um, <coughs> sorry guys, I haven't noted... Uh, yeah, told you yet. Uh, we are showing a Gulisapod Garbodor mirror, so if you haven't seen it or realized it so far, those Wimsypod are going to evolve soon. Yes, they are. So that means actually both the both the um, court, both the semi-final games are actually mirror matches. Yes. So a Gulisapod Garbodor mirror and a Drampa Garbodor mirror, which means that the final yeah. is guaranteed to be Drampa Garb versus Gulisapod Garb. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so you got that one to look forward to in uh, after however long this game takes, and the other one as well. <laughs> so, see you here, Mark. After an okay start, I guess. Uh, I mean, a lot of stuff has actually happened whilst we've been talking, so there's, but there's been a couple of energy drives, it looks like. Um, Mark actually is going to be able to take the KO here. There's been one energy drive already, and now there's going to be another one with two DCs and a choice band. That should be enough for the knockout. Yeah, it should. Um, is that Mark will be able? To, Mark will be able to take the early prize lead, and not only that, but he's been able to do this whilst uh, not really having to make use of his Galissapod yet. There goes a Rainbow Energy onto the bench Galissapod now, so he'll be able to attack with that next turn if he so wishes. Or actually, he could just bring it up now, just mid retreat the Lele, and just do first impression. That way, you know, stops uh, st it would have stopped the um, stop the Lele from being able to be knocked out back. But Mark deciding. Nah, you know what, I'd, rather, I'd just like save the Glyph Bottle later. I'll just attack with Lele for now. Yeah. That's a pretty safe play again. Um, he, he sees that Philip isn't really starting well. Philip now has a uh, heavy ball, finding himself a Galissapod GX, I assume. <laughs> yeah. Also, is this a Galissapod in the active versus Lele? I actually can't tell. There's like a tiny little bit of a card, which means makes me think it might be a rainbow Galissapod, but I really actually can't see. Well, I think is a Galissapod, but... I, I think it is as well. I just don't think Philip is, has any uh, rainbow Tapu Lele. So. Oh, okay. Um, it looks like that was uh, either either an energy drive or an armor press for KO. I'm actually not <laughs> entirely sure. <laughs> um, but now Philip gonna 
decide what prize he wants to take. It looks like he's taking both the grass and the double colorless. And now back to Mark as the as we see, Mark was able to get out the uh, Garbatoxin Garbador, so and he's always got the Trash Latch one up now on the bench as well. Another Wimpod. He has access to Galissapod, so he can bring that up and do first impression if he so wishes. He's also going to put a rainbow on another Wimpod to say to be able to attack with that one later. And it looks like, yeah, that's just what you're going to do. We retreat yeah. off the floatstone. First impression will do 120 damage to whatever this thing is. <laughs> <laughs> so right. let's see how Philip is going to react to this. He now also needs to, to continue putting some pressure on Mark. Otherwise, Mark is going to, to be in the lead in terms of uh, his setup. Yeah, we see Mark has got a lot more out already, whereas Philip has literally just got these, this thing in the active which is, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, the glitch spot on the bench to switch between. Um, there, there, we do see a Guzma and a Bridget opting to go for the Bridget, so Philip now finally able to maybe do a little bit more of a setup. We're going to get a couple more Wimpods out, maybe even a couple of Trubbishes as well. Yeah, there's one Wimpod, one Trubbish, and... Ooh, maybe he actually doesn't want to get anything else. There is another Trubbish he could get if he wants to. But he opts to go for the, another Wimpod yeah. instead. Yeah. <sighs> I'm trying to figure out what this is. Oh no, he changed his mind. He's actually going to go for the two Trubbishes after all. Oh, yeah. If this is a, yeah, if it was a good spot, that would make more sense because, yeah, like I said, if the Philip doesn't own any Rainbow Leleys, I, I was convinced, I didn't think Philip would own any Rainbow cards at all. Like, you know, he's not so. Yeah, of... it could be that he borrowed the Galissapod because he wasn't so sure about what he was playing. Um, I know that he was testing a lot the last week. Uh, he always told me, yeah, I, I want to play something with Garbodor, but I don't know yet what to pair with. He tested Espy and Garbodor a lot. But um, then he tested against uh, one of his teammates, Philip Lachewski. Philip Lachewski played uh, Gardevoir and uh, then Philip told me like, oh my god, I lost like 50 games in a row. I'm not going to play Espion Garbodor. And <laughs> well, it seems like he ended up playing Galissapod. <laughs> yes. Also, yeah, this was definitely a Galissapod now. He's done a crossing cut GX. He switched to the bench. So, and to be honest, thinking about it, this does actually make sense because like, you, it wouldn't... Normally you don't see like a combination of a rainbow and a DC attached to attack with Lele unless it's, you know, just the what bit you need to get the knockout. But more importantly on Mark's side, there is the first Ace Roller, so that crossing cut being undone entirely, so Philip is wasting his GX attack. Yeah. And that's a really sad Oh actually no, I just realized this is this isn't this isn't a Glissopod or a um Lele, Lele. it's a Feeny. Oh! So he's just done an aqua ring for 50 and switching. That, there we go. Because I, I just realized he didn't tip over the GX counter. So that's what it is. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting indeed. But that all of a sudden, that makes a lot of sense. Um, now, I, well, yeah, Mark had a really good turn using an Acer Roller um, to, and then taking a knockout as well. Going to be back to Philip. Mark has a pretty good lead. Oh yes, definitely. But, but Mark Phillip does have a Glissapod and a Rainbow Energy. He won't be able to do first impression for the full amount because he did, of course, just evolve the Glissapod that turn. But with he could... Um, I don't know, what can he do, actually? You, oh, he has oh, a Float Stone. Yeah. Okay. So obviously what he's just doing, he's just getting that Glissapod ready for later because there's no point attaching a Rainbow to anything else. But he can now retreat into the other Glissapod. And he actually, Guzma, bring up the Wimpod on the bench and actually take the KO that way. So yeah, first impression, will knock out the Wimpod. Oh, it goes an Ultra Ball into Philip's hand. And is Philip playing the Entrain um, Magiena promo, the one that... Yes, he is. Okay, this is interesting. I'm guessing this is for um, Gardevoir or yep. Rainbow yep. Force? Or... for Gardevoir. Because, yeah. uh, I don't know, because against Gardevoir, they don't, they want you any bench... Oh, actually, actually, I guess Fairy, Psychic, and Water. It all, it all adds up like different types on the bench. Probably. So, that's really interesting, actually. Not something I would have expected. Um, but for Mark now, yeah, a Garb or a Floatstone in the active. A double Colorless finding its way onto the Tapu Lele. Not, won't be enough to KO the Glissopod, but maybe just going for the two hit knockout, knowing that at this point, most of the players will probably know like all the lists of the. Car of the everyone in the cut, so Mark knows that going for two shots is safe-ish. Obviously, Philip can still retreat and then get a uh, prevent knockout that way, but there is no ACRL on Philip's side, as we've already said. So any damage that goes on will stay on, essentially, until yeah, something gets KO'd. Price. 
And this can also be kind of an advantage that Mark has now compared to the game we had earlier where Philip played versus Miss. Maybe Miss didn't really know that Philip is not playing any Acer Rollers. Mark does not now know that, so now he can he can plan a little bit better. Yeah. We saw there, by the way, whilst we were talking, Mark uh, did actually end up playing a Guzma, brought up the Feeny, and that was able enough. Had the Feeny had enough damage on it to be killed with an energy drive. So another two prizes for Mark. Actually, this game is going very, very quickly compared to the last game. Oh yes. Philip's already down to three prizes, and Mark's down to one. It's going to be interesting to see what Philip responds with here, because I mean, Mark is not that far away from winning this game. He has another Galissa pod ready to go. He hasn't used the GX attack yet, so a crossing cut for the win is not out of the question at all. Doesn't look good. Philip uh, uses a Guzma, brings up the win pod, but he can do another first impression for the knockout. Uh, take only one prize, but I think Mark is he's play he's acting as if he has the win in hand. Like you know, he's a little bit a little bit fidgety, although. But that's always well, kind of Mark. He always tries to to be confident. He has a pretty good poker face, well. He has, he does, yeah. It's very true. I mean, I mean look, look at that. Look at that face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not giving away anything. Also, I think, I guess I was wrong on the, having the win in hand because he's still, like, being slow thinking through and if he had the win, he would have uh, shown it already as he's already yeah, shown sure. us that he does before. He likes to save time in these sorts of things. But in that case, what can Mark do? He's got a double colorless, which he can commit to the Galissapod. This means it can now do crossing cut or armor press. Sadly, neither of those will KO the Glitter Pod and Philip's active. He also looks like he's choosing to a tool some sort. Yeah, he's going to put the choice band yeah. on the Glitter Pod. So now, if this means that Philip needs to be a bit more careful about benching something like the Taku Lele, because that could be now KO'd. But having said that, there's actually a Travish on, on the field which could be KO'd regardless, which I completely yeah. forgot about. So. Um, because Gumark only has one prize left. Yeah, this Travish is living quite dangerous. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, Mark there playing another Ultra Ball to grab himself a Galissa Pod of that, and actually just going to Sycamore it away, just filling all the useless cards out of his deck essentially. And what do you get off the Sycamore? Looks like a stretcher, some supporters. I don't see the Guzma for the win next turn though. Maybe. <sighs> yeah, it's a tricky, it's a tricky place to be in. So essentially. I think at this point, Mark really doesn't want to. Hmm. Yeah, he's, he switched into uh, his Gilda's pot. And it looks like he's gonna go for maybe the armor press. Just yeah, to... He's kind of struggling with this decision. I mean, the Gilda's pot has some damage on it already, right? Yeah. If no. he does. No? I don't think so. Or maybe it's a reflection of the artwork, I'm not sure, but... Um... Oh no, it has 10 from the Rainbow Energy, that's what it has. Oh, okay. Yeah. But but, that, but that's still fine, as long as it's not enough so that a uh, crossing cut can get a knockout, because obviously Philip, uh, 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 you know, forgetting my mistake earlier, Philip has not actually used his GX attack yet. Um, he could... If he had access to a Guzma, the game would be over, he could uh, bring up the Lele. Uh, go into his other Glissapod retreat and then oh he's got an Ultra Ball yeah he just put, uh, took it from his press card oh okay oh yeah of course that makes sense but yeah. uh, no okay no, sadly well, the Gavador, yeah. of course because as I said this Trubbish was living quite <laughs> dangerously <laughs> sadly first impression will still knock it out but um, I was going to say he could go for Lele for the Guzma for the win but he actually can't he can't do that because uh, he the Garbo Toxin is in effect for the yeah. tool so sadly that's not an option for him but Philip is still in a good shot here. He's committed. He's, he's already. So he's decided to commit the rainbow to the active instead of the Garba toxin. The, again, Retreat instead of the Garbador. But yeah, he's actually attached that so he could uh, discard free to retreat, bring up the other Glissapod, and then still leave one energy on the bench one. And it looks like it is going to be a first impression. Yeah. So. Hoping does... that Mark has no Acerola or uh, Max Potion. Or Guzma, which will win in the oh, game. Yeah. And. I think it's safe to say he doesn't have the Guzma. He would have played, again. He would have played it by now if he had it. Yeah. But he might have an Acerola. If he does, that could be a really good asset to keep Mark in this game. But I do think he also has no Acerola because this would also be quite. Let me just say it, a simple decision. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you're right. Yeah. Unless he's just thinking about what else Philip has access to, because 
if he ace a rollers, then he can't N, and yeah. he might want to N away a Guzma to do the DC plus crossing cut uh, for the KO on Lele for the win. So there's actually a lot to think about here. Uh, oh, he might go for a second more. No, he's going to go for a heavy ball first. Let's see what he has access to. But if you're Wormack, you don't really want to end yourself to only one card. Oh yeah, of course, this is the other issue, yeah. That's very true. So, Mark... Yeah, he might go for the second more, but before he plays it, he decides to put out some Pokemon he does not want to see after the second more. Uh, that, that being the Galissapod, because there is no, of course, Wimpod that you can evolve from. And uh, this DC is going to go somewhere, it's going to go on the Lele. And there's a stretcher he could play as well, but he probably doesn't want to because he doesn't want those uh, not useful Pokemon back in the deck. Oh, he does go oh, to the N. N. So that, wow. was what, that was what he was agonizing over. He was thinking, do I Sycamore here or do I N? And it looks like, I think his logic here is, if I can just, um, I don't know, retreat and attack with Lele, and Philip draws dead, I can just attack again and win. Yeah. I think that's what he's thinking here. And because, of course, if he leaves this uh, Gilded Spot in the active, Philip, Philip just wins anyway, so... So here we go. Once again, some big cards. What does Mark see? We don't know. <laughs> and he's going to use now. He's going to use the crossing cut. Uh, actually, preserving the energy. That's even better. So and also bring up the Garbodor, which only has was only worth one prize. And now Philip needs is out of his three cards. He needs to have something for the game, and he doesn't oh. have it. So Mark with the crossing cuts seals his seals his future, manages to take game one, and we are now moving on to game two. Some excellent play from Mark there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Realizing, Good game from Mark. Yeah. I think he realized at the end uh, he was gonna go for Sycamore, but then even though he was ending himself to one, he thought to himself, if I can just, you know, reduce the chance of Philip having the Guzma for the win, I can crossing cut, send up something and worth any one prize, and then I can take the game from there if he has nothing and Philip had nothing in the end, paying off in spades. Yeah, How many sure. games have we seen that just come down to like a, a, a someone and an end and someone missing? I can't even count anymore. <laughs> Too <laughs> many. And has been around for so long. Yeah, like, it, it it was around for ages, and then it went away for like a tiny period, like between it was when the rotation happened after twenty fifteen worlds, and then we went to break break through. Yeah, and then break point. And then we got Fates Collide and then came straight back and it was like, oh, he only had like six months break from end and now it's back. What the <laughs> Maybe we can have a quick look at the chat. Yes, we can. And then <laughs> thinking Andy play Guzma's. Oh, Power Beam also. So he's talking about playing um, Olympia as well as oh. Guzma just to give you like that extra one. So you have four Guzma and one Olympia. That's, that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, when it... Oh, yeah, I remember seeing your, your post, Paolo, about winning the LC. Congratulations on that, by the way. Oh, someone wrote, why exactly Tapu Fini here? Well, in this matchup, of course, uh, you don't really want to use it. But um, Mark actually used Tapu Fini to win his uh, last game in top 8, as he played against uh, Salazel Ho-Oh. So you can use the um, GX attack in order to negotiate uh, Salazel's GX attack. Uh, the, uh, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. you can, yeah. That's um, that's really cool. I actually forgot about that. Yeah, Mark was playing against Ho Salazel in top 8 and he actually won. Wow, yeah. like, that's just... I didn't mean that, so but... that's why both of them are playing Tapu Fini in their decks. Just to, yeah, stop yeah. the auto-loss to that. And uh, now with Philip, it looks like he was able to get a pretty good start this time. He does have the lady for the Bridget. He's able to get out a Trubbish and two more Wimpods. Uh, and again, good luck for the rest of his deck. Actually, maybe we can get a look at what's actually prized. He's going through quite quickly, so it's kind of hard to tell what exactly is in there. Well, but... I assume he's going to play Tile Map anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is of course very true. This is this is, this is the the Schultz way or the, the Philip Schultz way specifically. Robin, not so much. <laughs> no, Robin, not really. Yeah. I mean, that's a big difference between them, you know. What the Tile Map? The Tile Map. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it, it, Philip had an amazing season last year, so obviously, you know, it was a, it was a key differentiator. Um, so, Grass Energy on the Wimpod. Retreat. Well, yeah, the Wimp Out ability means that you can retreat for nothing on the first turn of the game. And then he puts a Float Stone on to the Lele and passes. Back to Mark. We see an Ultra Ball. Discarding a Double Colors to the Choice Band. Probably going to be, again, for a Lele for a Bridget. 
If the position is not prized. Yeah, this is true. Let's see. Ooh, is it? Is it not? Sometimes it's hard to tell, but again, because Mark has a very good poker face, <laughs> it's like, uh, is it there? Is it not? Oh, he's got a little bit of a grimace. Oh, but that could mean anything. <laughs> yeah, it, it could mean anything, you're right. Oh, but he's searching for quite a long time now. He oh. missed it. It's in the prizes. Oh dear, Mark. And. And. Again, not the end of the world really in, in this situation. He's still got one Trubbish and one Wimpo out. As long as he sees one more of uh, either one, I think he's, pro he's probably okay anyway. But I mean, just in, in top 8 we saw that happening to Tord as well, and he was still able to, or he still managed to win this game, so definitely not the end of the world. Absolutely not. So, off of this end, what does Mark see? Oh, he's got the Coco promo, that's really strong, so... Now he's going to have a lot more flexibility with his own Guzmas in order to switch into stuff. But after that, it is just going to be a pass. So back to Philip. Now, the ideal turn for Philip here would be Galissapod, Guzma, Kale the Wimpod. That way, Mark has no access to Galissapod at all next yeah. turn. And uh, I think then Philip would be at a big advantage. But does he have it? You've got a rainbow for the Garbo. I'm just going to stop saying which type it is. I'm just going to say Garbo each time because that way it can never be wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know what you mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a trash lounge garb. Though. It is. So he's got a rainbow attached, attached to the trash lounge garb, uh, and then following up with an N after that. So yeah, the the wimp on at least will be safe. But uh, assuming Philip finds uh, Galissabob, which is pretty likely, that Trubbish will be joining its friends in the discard pile before long. <laughs> Like the piece of rubbish that it is. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Trubbish. I mean, it's in the name. You can't really sort of, you know. Poor Trubbish. Poor Trubbish, indeed. Yeah, there it is. That's the Glissopod for Philip. It finds a heavy ball as well, so he'll actually be able to get a second Glissopod off of this. So setting up, setting up himself up to have both access to both of his attackers quite nicely here, and this is again much better set up from Philip's side than from Mark's right now. Yes. Definitely. This time it seems to be a little bit the other way around. We we seem to have that often in the mirror matches we show, and we seem to show many mirror matches. Sorry, <laughs> guys. <laughs> kind of what can't be avoided. Um, meanwhile, Philip retreats with the lady into the uh, trash lounge, Scarbador, to the right that time, and he actually there's enough items in the discard pile for him to just take the KO on that Trubbish, especially because of the weakness to psychic that the Trubbish has. Yeah. So now back on Mark's side, he presents up the Coco. Uh, it really has to over his hand actually. It, he seems like he has okay, he has a heavy ball at least, so that will get him the Galissapod, which is uh, really good. So he has at least one attacker ready to go. That will of course do enough damage because he can bring it active and then the first impression will be doing the 120 required to KO the Garbador. Yeah, the good thing about Tapu Coco is that it has no retreat cost, especially in a deck like Galissapod where you where you want to switch a lot of times, this can come in handy. Philip does not play the type of Coco. He relies on a Pokemon on his bench having a Floatstone attached to it, uh, which can be, yeah, quite an, a disadvantage time by time. Definitely, we do see there that Mark is opting to go for the type of Lily. He's going to bring himself the the Sycamore to his hand, and now and a double Colorless going onto that, and a Choice Band. So getting ready, get ready to stack up that type of Lily to do some big damage potentially later on, and then following the Sycamore. Seven new cards in Mark's hand. I can only see an N. Rescue stretcher. That will get him a trouble the trubbish back. Yeah. So maybe next turn he can get the garbage box in out, or you know, just maybe put in a put in a, a trash lounge of his own. Fuel blower comes in, discards the float stone. Could be relevant later. Yeah. Uh, but for the meantime, retreat. First impression. Knock out on the garbage door. One more prize for, for Mark. And now Philip has a decision here because like, the fact that the float stone was discarded was a bit annoying because it's like, oh, now I guess I have to find another one or I could just like not. Oh, he does have a rainbow energy for the article spot, but that's pretty cool. But if he wants to do do the full 120 with first impression, he needs a float stone. Oh, yes. And okay, there, it, there is. it is. Okay, so Philip is now fine because he can retreat into the article spot and just yeah, do. 120 with first impression. Mark takes his draw. This would be a really good time for an Acerola, Mark, if you have it. Do but, um, 
Mark's second name is not Esmerola. No. Not like me. <laughs> no, no, this is this is very but this is very, very true. So but it is his hand is still pretty big. I think he could have it, you know, there's a there's a there's a trash launch guard door. Rainbow energy goes onto that. Ooh. Does he have it? I don't think so. Otherwise he would have played it a little bit faster, I I guess. He Yeah. Mm. It's like a mark. Unfortunate the mark there. I think the other the other debate is actually with the Ace Roller, um there's no other wing pod actually out on the field to mark yeah. right now, so if he ace rollers, he's committed to not doing a, a first impression of the stone, which could have been uh could make him fall a bit too far back for his liking. But now he's got the heavy ball or the ultra ball, whichever one it was, actually it was an ultra ball, and now he's got a second wind pod, so at least next turn he'll be able to do another attack. And he will be able to use well not if this uh, Gobble Support goes down, but if he is able to build up a second one, he can use a Roller. Yeah, he can. So with the Phillips Gun on the Glissopod, uh, Mark uh, retreats into the Lele, there's an energy drive onto the uh, Phillips Glissopod, which will hit the 90. Phillips responds by just gusbering straight away, wasting no time, brings up the damage Glissopod, and that will be another first impression for the knockout, taking two more prizes. and. Uh, Philip, oh no, those, those were the first two prizes he took, okay. I, I thought that Philip had like taken four prizes already, I was like, what? <laughs> Mis- no, I think he took three prizes already. No, no, it's only two. Uh, you can see it's very thinly, it's like there's definitely four sleeves there for Philip's side. Are you sure? I think so, yeah. Okay, well we see. Well, didn't he, he KO'd a Wimsy part earlier? Oh no, sorry, you're right, he did take three, he KO'd a Trubbish earlier, you're right. Oh yeah, this is Trubbish, yeah. Yeah, sorry, you're absolutely right, I completely forgot. Um. I guess it must be just the lighting reflection makes it look like yeah no it is free prizes you're you're, yeah. you're right. So Mark's also down. Mark's down to four prizes. So Philip is in a short prize lead. Um, looks like they were playing an N or Mark was playing an N. Yeah, yeah, there was definitely an N played there. Um, looks like other than that though, Mark's just going to be forced to bring out the type of lady again and the energy drive, but it's not even a knockout. Mark also wasn't able to find another Gilda support. He, ha- he has two Wim supports now, so with one Gilda support, uh, he can start attacking and then using a Roller to directly evolve again, but uh, there are still a few things missing. Yeah, Philip, in the meantime, he has, has a double colorless, which he can commit to the Gilda support on the bench, and he will now play an N. Could he be digging for the choice man to get a knockout crossing cut, or do you think he might save it for later if he has it? I think if he has it, he he will use it because he knows that he has to put some pressure on Mark. Yeah, he's he's already got the prize lead, so that's one thing. I guess Philip might be scared of uh, getting N to one after this, because although Philip, although the, this deck can work off the board a little bit, it's not to the same level as some of the other decks around. Uh, does the thing also is we haven't seen any Ace Rollers so far, so Mark has all of his Ace Rollers still in his deck, and Philip might rather go for one hit chaos if he can. Yeah, this is very true actually. Now from Mark's side, oh he now he now finds the Glissopod. Does he have an Acerola? Because if so, now would be a good time to play it. He'll like he'll, he'll, he'll like Glissopod. Draw Mark, you know you want to. His poker face is slowly falling down. Slowly. It's weird because he has a good poker face. We were saying before about how how like, you know, yeah. his facial expressions are really <laughs> they're just amazing still, so it's like he has both of these at the same time somehow, which always seems paradoxical, but he somehow manages to do it. Yeah, that's true. Very yeah. true. Right, there's a rainbow energy going onto the ventricular support. Now, what is Mark's supporter? Yo, he has an ultra ball. He can... can't really see what he's discarding. No, but he can actually use this to grab a lily at this point. There's one bench space left, there's no garbage toxin in effect, he can use one attack and he actually can grab the Acerola. And this actually has a double benefit because he can Acerola the Lele, put it back in his hand, attack with a Glissopod, and then he has a delay for the next turn in order to rebench it and search for a supporter to carry on. Yeah. Oh, that's such a cool combo. But I don't think that's what he's going to do now. He... Oh yeah, sorry, I, I thought this was a leaf now. No, 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 is it? No, is it? Yeah, 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 it's an Acerola, yeah. definitely. Yeah, so he gets the Ace Roller. Yeah, he's got the Choice Band as well for the Glissopod. Does the retreat, brings up the Glissopod, and he actually he has the knockout. And then next turn, assuming Philip doesn't that Philip doesn't end, he can just uh, rebench the Lady. He does Ace Roller, get the Sycamore, and carry on, or yeah. get the Guzma for the win. Whatever works. Two more prizes for Mark, and now it's up to Philip to respond. 
That's a really, really huge turn for Mike there. Oh yes, definitely. That's what we told you guys before the, the game, that the matchup is, is in favor for Mark because of the Acerolas. Yeah, just even that one Acerola, you see, it's actually one of the yeah. first ones we've seen him play, but that just undid a whole turn of work and set up Mark beautifully to KO Phillips, one of Phillips' biggest threats. Definitely. And not only that, but Mark now only has two prizes left. He could actually just win off of the back of DCE Guzma because he can he still has access to the crossing cut and that, that uh, Galissapod is choice bounded. So if he has DC in hand, and we know he has Lele in hand because he just acerola did, he actually has the win. There's a DC on Lele, There's but... There's the end. Okay. A little bit sad for Mark. I think from his reaction, maybe he actually had it all ready to go before that happened. Probably. And even if he hadn't, being end down to only two hand cards is never good. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Nick is getting a bit tired here. <laughs> it's been it's been a long two days. <laughs> oh yes. Uh, but, it, but, but it's been really good fun. So now Philip retreats to the spot, brings up the Tapu Lele, energy drive. Back to Mark. What does he have? Does he have the game? No. You, you, no. no. You saw it. Mark's not a time waster. If he has the game, he whacks it down. Like that's goes without saying. Ooh, there is a trash lunch garden there. That's yeah, a rainbow. That's a trash -lunch. There is oh he has the Guzma. And then he can and then he's doing first impression for the knockout. Oh, that's pretty hard. And, oh wait, hold on, did I thought Does Mark have two prizes left? I thought he only had one. No, he has two prizes left. Oh okay. Oh, so he actually needed to do that anyway. I thought sorry, I thought he had the game by KOing the Lele, but if he had three prizes left and that was the his uh fourth four the you know, one of the three he had to take, then actually yeah, that didn't work, I didn't realise. Whoops. <laughs> but, oh yeah, this is fine then. So now Mark, uh, Mark could take the game with a crossing cut, I guess. In the meantime, though, there's another Guzma from uh, Philip bringing up the wind pod with the engine and the float stone on it. And uh, this can be uh, this can be hit with energy drive for the KO. Mark's saying something. I'm not sure if he's saying, oh, I've got the win, I've got the win, or he's like trying to bait or whatever. Oh, he's oh, showing he's got the win. Shaking. Oh, wait, no. Hold on. Is that. Wait, what happened? Oh, those two guys are always so unemotional. Yeah, like, who actually won? <laughs> Come on, guys, be happy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah okay. Mark okay. Yeah. So Mark showing that you had the win in hand. Okay, that makes sense. So. <laughs> <laughs> God, so why is that? Why that needs to be so confusing? Like, <laughs> just uh, needless. So well done to Mark. Let's. Uh, he's now advancing to the final to play. Yes. We don't know because the other match is still going. Yeah, the other match is still going. He's playing Ivor Tor Rackler. Or Thomas used, but uh, anyways, he's going to face a Drampa Garbage Lord deck. Yeah, maybe no matter what happens. In any case, uh, we've got plenty of time now, so we are 100% going to get Mark in for an interview right now. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We'll be, we'll be getting right in.
So welcome back guys. I'm here with Mark Lutz who just won his top four match. Um, Mark, uh, did you expect to win before? I know you told me that you feel like you're in a, an advantage against Philip because he's not playing Acerola. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, could you elaborate on that? That's the, the, yeah. Could you elaborate a little bit more? <laughs> yeah, as you said, playing Acerola is a huge part of the mirror match. Like you can attack with Gullah support and then you can heal it and then also reuse it, which is which are all really big parts and well he has no access to his roller, so that's good. Yeah, you you're kind of buying a little bit more turns and yeah. Yeah. Having a better board. Um so you are now fi facing either um Tord Redcliffe or uh Thomas Hughes. Both are playing Drumper Garbador. Um, how do you feel your Drumper Garbador matchup is? Uh, I think the matchup is very close to 50-50. It really depends on like how fast can I get mm -hmm. Power Town. Do I have a field blow for Power Town? And you know, like stuff that I have to discard. And there's also like the energy removal part because Righteous Edge gets me in one shot range and also gets rid of my rainbow energy. So there are a lot of things that can go wrong. But on the other hand, I can one shot him and I can deal a lot of pressure in the other game. So. We'll see. Okay, so um, we had a discussion earlier about uh, your facial expressions. Would you be so kind and do your favorite facial expression for your fans out there? You mean when I just smile like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aw, isn't he lovely? Aww. <laughs> 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 okay, um... So for the rest of the tournament, do you do you feel Galissa Pod Gabador was a good choice? Well, I wouldn't have played it otherwise, oh, right? Yeah, yeah but um, I feel like Galissa Pod Gabador is really good right now because no one really knows what to play. Everyone knows that Gabador was a really good deck and there's some people are like, oh yeah, then I play Metacross. And well, Galissa Pod Gabador basically doesn't have really any super bad matchups. Like Fire obviously is really bad, but you can still win. And everything else is very doable because you have Acer Roller and you know you just hit very hard for low energy. Um, someone in the chat asked about uh, playing Tepufini in Gullisaput Garbador. I shortly tried to explain them that it was an attack against uh, Selassel Ho O. Uh, maybe you can explain that a little bit better than I can as you are playing it. Tepufini is useful in a lot of matchups, like even against, for example, Metacross or Garbador, like the stage 2 decks. They usually try to just go all in on one Pokemon because Ability Lock eventually blocks them. And when the late game starts, then they only have like one stage two in play and then you can just Tapu Storm it back in the deck and then they have Ability Lock and like almost no Sycamore left, so they're like screwed. And against Ho, of course, if they turn on Kiavi, you can just turn on Tapu Storm them back into the deck and then also screwed. And also, it, it does a 20 damage for one ray, for one colorless energy. So with the choice band, you can actually hit Volcano for 100 and switch out if you want to. And that's also very helpful. Yeah, that's that's pretty huge, I guess. <laughs> so um, is there anyone you want to say hi to? My viewers. Aww. Okay, so thank you, Mark, for the interview. Yes. Good luck for the final. Thank and um, maybe we'll see you here again soon. Yeah. And uh, see you guys soon. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with the finals. Maybe not that fast as uh, Mark managed to win quite quickly. <laughs>